welcome back. As you can probably see, it's getting a bit fresh around here. I think it was minus 12 or something when we first got up. Dropped to about 10 now, or gone up to about 10. <laughs> so this is just gonna be a quick video explaining the sort of basics on solar and batteries and stuff and showing you how you can get into it and start learning. Because although it is very tempting to buy like a all-in-one battery bank kit type thing, the problem with that is you don't really learn anything. You're just buying a product and if it doesn't work for some reason you look at it and you think I don't really know what's going on here. So I would always encourage people to start from the beginning, start off very small and develop your knowledge from there. I'm going to show you a little system today. It's probably not the best demonstration because we don't have a lot of sunlight anymore. <laughs> this is as good as it gets now. It's just getting worse. And that'll be gone in about 45 minutes. But I can show you the components anyway. So let's go have a look. Now, just quickly before we start, obviously I'm not an expert in this. I have no training. I've not you know, studied in the traditional sense, but I've studied myself. I know what I know through experience and self-learning. Just want to put that out there because if someone tries to do these things and blows themselves up, it's not my fault. <laughs> I'm just showing you how I've done it. This is not a lesson. I mean, that's highly unlikely, to be honest, but you know, you got to say it, haven't you? Right, we'll start over here then. This is the barbecue, campfire, hut, whatever you want to call it. But this actually has its own power system, which is kind of funny. Very, very basic. This whole system here, I mean, the battery is the most expensive, but you don't need to go out and buy a new battery. When you're first learning, you can use an old car battery or something. It's not a problem. That's what that is in there. But we'll get onto the battery in a sec. First thing is this here, which is covered in a centimetre of frost at the moment. But this is just a cheap, I think it's about 30 quid from eBay or something a few years ago. Cheap solar panel. What is it? 30 watt panel. So it's not particularly powerful. I mean, the ones we've got in the house are 360 each. But a little 30 watt panel just to get you started. Obviously, as you can probably see right now, the sun's over there and this is pointing over here. So it's a bit useless. I should probably move it around to the back during the winter, but we don't use it that often anyway. So it don't really matter. But obviously during the summer here, the sun sort of does this. <laughs> it only goes down over there for an hour or so and then it comes back up again. But yeah, let's go have a look inside. So from that solar panel, that's this cable here. Uh, it's relatively thin cable because it's only a small panel, so it's only putting out like an amp and a half, two amps or something. So that comes in and that leads up to this thing, which is a solar charge controller. Now, again, this is just kind of a crap one. It's just cheap, but it's got a job to do and it does it. This whole system here, well, this is it. All this does is power that light. And then when we're out here in the summer, it's got a couple of USBs on here. So we can have a phone plugged in and also a like a Bluetooth speaker or something. So it's constantly charging. But this is it. This is the entirety of this setup. Solar panel comes to here, two wires. And then the plus and minus two wires from this go down to the battery. How this battery is still working, I've got no idea because this has been sat out here for two years now. It's gone through two winters, obviously very extreme winters here. So this has been sat out in best part of minus 40 and it still works. <laughs> Probably wouldn't start a car with it anymore, but we are getting charged and it's at 12.9 volts. And if I press this load button here, then the light still comes on. And it's dropped to 12.7 volts for a, a tiny little LED chip, which is in there. 
So that kind of tells you how broken this battery is. <laughs> but that's fine. But that is it. That is an off-grid solar system right there. You know, you, an old car battery or something, or just a really cheap one. This is only 70 amp hours. And off this, you can run quite a lot. You know, obviously, the more you want to run, the more you have to scale up the system. But this is just looking at the fundamental basics. And right here, you've got a way that you can charge phones, you can charge batteries, you know, whatever, off the sun for free once it's once you've bought the initial stuff. But say, you can get a solar panel and a charge controller for 30, 40 quid. I mean, if you want to get a 100 watt panel and a controller, which is probably more useful, it's only going to be about 100 quid, and then it's done. And then you can just connect whatever battery you want to it. But this right here is just a 12 volt system. So you can only power 12 volt things, you know, 12 volt lights, USB sockets, all of that kind of stuff. That will run off this. When you get a system like this, you start playing with it and understand it and seeing what you can connect to it and stuff like that you start to understand these voltages what they mean when you're charged when you're not charged you know stuff like that it's not just giving you a percentage like oh we're at 10 percent now better go plug it into the wall because you don't really learn anything from that but fundamentally this is exactly the same as what we've got in the house that's just a lot bigger it's the same thing, just scaled up. So we're going to go in there now and I'll show you what you can do with something like this. God, it is beautiful out here though. I love days like today. Sunny and freezing. So before we head in, you see solar panels here. We've got solar panels here. Obviously they all go in and connect to the next bit. We even have another solar panel here which its sole purpose cable runs in to another charge controller just up there and all that does is goes to these two clips here which go onto the tractor and charge the battery up on that during the the better months keep it maintained so i can start it whenever i need it now obviously those that know about this kind of stuff will be saying things like what about the fuses and all of that fuses are obviously very important and you need to be using them really we don't have any out there because there's just no point <laughs> like we don't do anything with that system it's never going to get overloaded it's fine but obviously everything we have in here everything else i do is fused and we can go more into that in the future but just for the moment we're keeping it absolutely basic simple just to understand the idea of it and the last bit that I want to touch on because this is where it gets interesting is yes you can run you know USB stuff whatever speakers and charge phones and little LED lights and things all off the 12 volt side of it but then you can get something like this which is a, an inverter a power inverter and what this does See, again, you've got your red and your black, which go to the, the plus and the minus on the battery. And this little gadget here takes the 12 volts from the battery, does some trickery, and turns it into 230 or 240 mains power out of a plug. So from your battery, you can then do whatever you want. Everything you see in here, like this compressor, and power tools over there they're all mains powered but we don't have any grid feed electricity in here it all comes from the batteries and they go through an inverter like this again these are cheap if you want to start playing with these this is a 600 watt it's not a pure sine wave one it's a modified sine we won't i don't want to over complicate things this is just a very basic one so you wouldn't want to run anything sensitive off this like a computer for example but for basic stuff, power tools, things like that, as long as they're not over 600 watts, you can use it. I'll show you what we have around the side here. It's exactly the same thing. So this silver one here is the same as the other one, but this is 1,000 watts. I use this for the power tools. And we have another one here, which is a more expensive unit, but it's pure sine wave. 
So that I use for charging batteries, just because they make weird noises otherwise. You can charge them on one of them. But when I do live streams in here, I have the laptop and the camera and everything plugged in. It's all running off that inverter. It's pretty amazing, really. When you sort of condense it down into its absolute bare minimum form, a solar panel, a controller, a battery, and an inverter. And you can essentially sit and watch your TV from the power of the sun, just straight in like that. No electricity bill, none of that. But it's the same as anything. Once you've you know, started to get into it, you start to understand how it all works. You start to get excited about it. And then you want to upgrade and buy bigger stuff and, and run more things. And all of a sudden, your whole house is powered by 12 volts of batteries. The possibilities are really as, as big as your imagination can go. And wallet, of course, because <laughs> you've got to buy all this stuff. But I just wanted to make this video really to show you how simple it is and how easy you can get into for, I don't know, what should we say? For a hundred quid, not even. If you can get a second hand battery from someone or if you've maybe you've got an old car battery that wasn't enough to get your car going but will be enough to power some small devices so you can start learning probably 50 quid all in and you can start playing with this stuff you don't you only need a bit of cable when you're working with such uh, low powered things cheap little solar panel you know you don't need massive wires so it's not expensive and just have a play with it really start learning it start understanding what the different voltages mean in terms of the state of charge of the battery and things like that it really not only is this a lot of fun you know once you start getting excited about it it's a lot of fun to play with this stuff but also it's it's practical as well because you can start applying it to things you know on the sort of very basic level you could have a system that you've set up you know a couple of car batteries or whatever some basic inverter and a solar panel and if you ever get a power cut you've got a backup and you can still charge your phone and things like that you know a lot of people are moving towards the all-in-one power station things you know but they are extremely expensive and again, you don't really learn anything, especially if you've never dabbled in this stuff before. You're buying this box and hoping that it works when you plug your stuff in. And if it doesn't, you don't understand why. You're not, you don't know which part of the system is broken, things like that, you can't fix it. There's nothing you can do. So I'll just quickly touch on fuses, just, you know, if you are going to play with this stuff, then you do need to understand it. It's basically, it is just to s prevent fire. That's the, all it does, having fuses. So obviously I'm not actually going to connect this up, so I'm a bit stupid. But all you need to remember is the fuse, what it's doing is it's protecting the wire, the cable. That's it. I mean, obviously you know some of them protect the device but fundamentally it's to stop this thing from setting on fire and melting if there's a fault somewhere even things like these lights very basic stuff you put a fuse in to protect that wire just in case because you you don't want to fire obviously especially not in a wooden building but something like this you're definitely going to want to fuse because you're using bigger wires and stuff in the future we can discuss about wire sizes and how you know what size to use and all of that but again i'm not an expert anything i don't know i just look on the internet and learn it pretty much but this is what you'd have you'd have i don't have enough wire but on your positive side here you'd have a fuse which is the right rating for the cable to the positive on your battery and then that to the negative and that's it like just that there, I mean, it probably would work because this is fully charged, but I can't be bothered to connect it all together. That little loop right there with a bigger battery could power, what's that, 600 watts, could power this bandsaw. 
just like that if you wanted it to. Obviously that battery wouldn't last very long but that's not the point. What I'm trying to get across here is there is another way to do this, to live, to have power. It doesn't just have to be the mains, pay monthly, all of that relying on the system, you know. You don't have to go fully off grid and live in a field. It's just learning about these technologies, because this isn't new, this is all, you know, it's old stuff, it's been around a long time. Learning about it and figuring out ways that you can implement it into your life. But I want to keep this video nice and short, not go off on tangents, and just show you the start, the baby steps that you need to start learning about this stuff. Any questions you've got, feel free to put it down in the comments, either me or I'm sure other people more knowledgeable than me will help you out as well. And also anything else that you'd like me to talk about, let me know. Right, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching.